jump right into top secret then we're going to do some questions then we're outy we're going to play two quick videos lady is going to talk about what's on the other side you're going to like this one here we go all right lady what is this it's 10 o'clock at night do you know where your hardware is well you will when you have this rtk board this is a precision gps uh, and real-time kinematics location shield that we've designed here. Um, so I got two of them. I don't even want to talk about how expensive these are. So it was really stressful when I first plugged in the USB and I was like, I really hope it enumerates. Um, but this actually has native USB and I've got it connected here. I soldered on a, or, yeah, sorry, an SMA connector. And this is going to a U-Blox antenna that's out the window. Uh, thankfully the window isn't too far away from my desk. And you can see I've even got pulse per second, uh, RTK signal, and then um, what's interesting is that this just shows up as like a COM port. And then over here, I've got the U-Blocks U-Center. And you can see it's seeing satellites and data. So a really good start. Um, next up, I have to figure out how to connect, you know, one of these as a base station to one of these as a rover and communicate between the two. Um, I might use our new Metro S3 as the transport layer. So, you know, solder this on top and then um, use this either ESP now, perhaps, or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth Low Energy uh, to transport the RTK data between the two, and then um, they can tell exactly how far apart they are. So uh, just started like five minutes ago, just plug this in, but thankfully um, we're off to a good start. Early data, what is this? This is a uh, 5H 800 by 480 display, and it's connected up to an ICN6211. This is a very interesting chip. Um, it's not very well documented, but what it does is it takes DSI, so MIPI signal, and converts them to RGBTTL. So it's got like 8-bit red, 8-bit green, 8-bit blue, V-sync, H-sync, data enabled, on off, all that good stuff, pixel clock. Um, so normally, you know, if we were going to drive a display like this from a Raspberry Pi, you'd either connect to the HDMI port which means you need an HDMI to TTL converter, and that's like the RTD 2662 and friends, or like a TFP 401. But what's nice about this chip is it doesn't use any of the GPIO, like they're not connected, and it doesn't use the HDMI, um, and you still get really good quality video, and this chip is like only two bucks. So um, this is a fun little demo coming soon to the Adafruit shop. Okay, so uh, this is a photo from this, but this is the, the board. Why is this a big deal? Uh, this is cool because, um, you know, historically, if you wanted to connect displays to a compute module board or Raspberry Pi, you'd have to use either all the DPI pins, all the GPIO to connect to DPI display, or HDMI, which requires like a high power HDMI to TTL converter. Um, there are existing projects that use this ICN6211 to convert DSI to TTL, but like none of them are open source and documented. None of them are going to make it easy for you to add your own screen. I want to make it easy. So I'm going to open source everything and publish and document it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to release this particular deck board. I might just to be like, hey, for folks who really want to experiment, um, you'll need to connect all the pins and ports together as you desire. Explorer board. But explore, yeah, maybe it's going to be an ICN Explorer board. But um, this is for standard TTL. And then I also um, have a version for um, the other 40 pin uh, version, which um, requires an onboard microcontroller to um, set the SPI commands to turn the display on. It's like two standards apparently. So, well, I'm learning a lot as I'm yeah. doing this. There's a lot of like, this is so terrible for everyone. How could they do this to human beings? Wait, we could maybe fix this. Yeah. So, uh, I'm in soon. That's yeah. Absolutely. It's happening.